thanks for inviting me、uh, to this、uh, climate coffee session. And the the presentation I'm going to give today is about the、uh, the slowdown of the Antarctic bottom water、uh, export driven by the climatic wind and the sea ice changes. So、uh, this work is、uh, supported by、uh, my colleagues in Bass and from、uh, our institute in Southampton,、uh, in Sabah University and North, and with my colleagues' names here. And uh, they, uh, I, I like just、uh, thank them for their、uh, output and uh, uh, discussion throughout the completion of this work. And I should also mention that this work is also uh, uh, endorsed by these three、um, wonderful projects, and all of which has their own elements、uh, of looking at the,、uh, the deep ocean ventilation、uh, in the Red Sea. So,、um, so on the top left,、uh, I'm showing the the schematic of the、uh, water mass circulation of the of the Red Sea. You can see all the water mass is circulating、uh, cyclonically along the、uh, the gyre circulation、uh, in the weddell, and so the reason that we are、uh, caring about the、uh, the bottom water is that、um, it's、uh, it's a precursor of the of the、uh, this really important Antarctic bottom water、uh, that's、uh, engineering the abyssal overturning circulation, which is、uh, going to circulate around the world and. It's an important processes of the carbon and、uh, heat sequestration、uh, that's uh, that's、uh, going on in the southern ocean. So the bottom water、uh, has in the in the Weddell Sea has its、uh, dense flavor、uh, that's sourced from the continental shelf,、uh, uh, originate from the the formation of the water mass called the highest shelf water through the、uh, the process of ice freezing.、Um, If you look at this、uh, zoomed-in、uh, diagram,、uh, this is the the southern continental shelf in the Weddell Sea, and the、uh, the purple arrows is roughly showing the the hotspots of the formation site of this、uh, high sand shelf water. So once this high sand shelf water,、uh, high sand shelf, high sand sea shelf water get formed, so part of them will cascade down to the、uh, continental slope northward directly, and Then feed into the abyssal ocean as part of the、uh, the bottom water, but the other part of the high sea shelf water will just flush down underneath the ice cavity,、uh, following the bathymetry, and it triggers these um, uh, so-called under ice、uh, overturning circulation, and during the entrainment of the high sea shelf water, it gets in contact with the the, the 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 base of the ice shelf, and then it starts to melt ice shelf and.、Uh, And lead to the formation of a slightly、uh, lighter but super cooled、uh, water mass. It's called ice shelf ice shelf water. And then, because it's more buoyant,、uh, the ice shelf water it starts to、um, ascend、uh, along the base of the ice and toward the continental shelf. And then, the ice shelf water and the remaining high sea shelf high sea shelf they got mixed、uh, with the ambient water mass on the continental shelf, and then. We call this as a bulk of the dense shelf water, which eventually cascades、uh, down to the continental slope from the Fiordland Depression, and mixed with the、uh, modified warm deep water to eventually form the big bulk of the bottom water that's filling the abyss of the Weddell Sea. So,、um, so we are talking about so、uh, the, the the topic of the the, the title of the top、uh, of this talk is about the Antarctic bottom water. Uh, from the Weddell Sea, but、uh, if we look at the the export pathway of the、uh, of the water mass、uh, getting coming、uh, of the dense water mass coming out of the Weddell Sea, we found that the bottom water in the Weddell Sea is actually not directly exported、uh, through these、um, uh, the pathway、uh, the lining up on the over the north of the Weddell Sea because of this、uh, bathymetric feature as. Uh, in between the Scotia Sea and the Weddell Sea, so、uh, but what、uh, get directly exported、uh, from the Weddell Sea to the、uh, uh, to the、uh, to the to the Scotia Sea is actually a water mass called the、uh, Sea Deep Water. So,、um, but the the reason that we、uh, care about the bottom water is that the the 
the, the change of the bottom water volume is going to um, change the, the density classes that's exposed to this uh, uh, bathymetric feature uh, that's intersect with this, uh, the, with this ridge. And it's going, it, it is going to eventually dictate the, the water mass property that's been exported through this bathymetric feature. So we think um, understanding the, the change of the water sea bottom water volume will be our first step to understand the property change of the exported Antarctic bottom water from the Red Sea and to understand the variability that's being observed uh, uh, for, the, for the north. So, um, so to look at the, uh, the change of the, uh, of the Red Sea bottom water volume, uh, we used the, uh, uh, the CTD data that's been collected roughly have been well served or well maintained on the yearly basis over the past 30 years across uh, various hydrographic transactions. It's been um, shown in uh, this map. So uh, there are three uh, major uh, hydrographic sections that's sampling the Red Sea uh, from the top to the bottom. One is A12, which is on the prime meridian. The other one is called SR4. It's uh, crossing the uh, the, the uh, Weddell Sea from the peninsula to the uh, just the upstream of the uh, uh, the major um, ice shelf and the the, uh, the 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 southern continental shelf. And another one is nicely sampling the uh, the export pathway uh, north of the Weddell Sea. It's called A A23. Um, so. We collect all these uh, hydrographic, uh, hydrographic data sets and we compute the, uh, the, the water mass area that's being occupied uh, along these uh, hydrographic transactions for each year. And then we can put them uh, over time and we can see how this water mass area has changed over time. And this is what's been shown in this uh, plot. So each time series is the water sea bottom water area that's been computed along the either along the entire uh, hydrographic transactions or over the part of those hydrographic transactions, and we can see all these time series are showing a very distinct uh, decrease in terms of the uh, bottom water uh, mass area over the past thirty years. And if we take an average across these uh, time series, we have a rough estimate about uh, over just about over 30% of the decrease in the water sea bottom water volume over the uh, past 30 years. And the consequence, the direct, direct consequence of this uh, bottom water volume reduction is that it can lead to the deep water warming. Uh, the way it works is that so the the water mass dis distribution in the Weddell Sea is that the, the warm and silent circumpolar deep water is sits on top of a fresher and colder Weddell Sea deep water and the bottom water. So the loss of the Weddell Sea bottom water will lead to the vertical deplacement of the uh, of the density of the of the isopic node. And this effectively leads to the uh, the deep weather warming by replace the the, origin, the the water mass with the warmer and the saline uh, water mass from the above, and on the the figure I'm showing on the right is is showing exactly what I'm talking about. So the white line here is the uh, the average uh, warming rate uh, of the of the Weddell Sea across all the hydrographic profiles that we collected along the three. Hydrographic, hydrographic transaction transact, and if we decompose that into the uh, the component that associate with this isopic no vertical displacement, and the and the residue of that would be the uh, the, the water mass change along the isopic no, and we can see that in the deeper water sea, uh, deeper than about two thousand meter, most of the observed total warming rates can be explained by the. Uh, uh, the isopicanol displacement component, which suggesting that the, the the reduction of the bottom order and the consequent vertical displacement of the isopicanol is the main reason that's uh, causing these deep weather warming. And 
the the magnitude of these warming rates uh, is about two milli degree per year, and it, that is equivalent to a 0.34 watt per meter square. But if we put this number into the global context, we found that it is five times greater than the global average, um, which is a quite an alarming uh, number to 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 look at. So the the next question uh, for for us to ask is that what is causing these uh, what is the bottom water reduction? So we think it is associated with the sea ice uh, changes. So as we as I mentioned uh, in the previous slides, that the Weddell Sea bottom water has this dense flavor that's coming from the formation of the highest in the shelf water. And the highest in the shelf water formation is related to the process of the sea ice freezing. And especially in those coastal Polynia area where the uh, the strong offshore wind blowing from the continent to the, uh, to the ocean. And at the same time, it, uh, it keeps uh, the sea, uh, it, it maintains this very narrow uh, open water area called coastal Polynia, where the sea ice is allowed to form uh, through the direct interact, uh, direct contact of the uh, near freezing sea surface water and the very cold atmosphere. So on the top on the top left, I'm sh the the colorful map I'm showing you here is the linear trend of the winter time sea ice formation rate. So the sea ice formation rate is computed uh, according to these uh, bulk formula. So it is essentially a a estimate of the available heat flux that can be used to form the sea ice at the, each given uh, sea ice condition. So and then we retrieve the CS condition from the satellite uh, observation and we get the uh, the air temperature from the reanalysis products and we assume that sea surface is uh, constantly near the freezing point which is the case uh, in the in the area uh, of interest and then we get these CS formation rates uh, linear trend for each uh, for each uh, winter season which is from the april to October and we have the full time series from 2000 from 1992 to 2020 and we retrieve the linear trend of this metric for each individual grid point and we plot them on the on the map. So as we can see, uh, there's some very uh, uh, strong uh, negative uh, pattern in front of the Rony ice shelf and over the Brooklyn bank. And these are exactly two main uh, formation sites of the highest in the shelf water, um, as we as we see from the previous diagram. Um, um, so another thing is that the reason that these two uh, regions are being the uh, heavily favored uh, highest in the shelf water formation site is because that, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it is uh, strongly affected by the offshore winds. But if we look at uh, the linear trend of the sea surface wind vector, we found that there's a uh, there's a very dominated inshore trend, meaning that the offshore winds in the uh, over the southern continental shelf over the past 30 years is actually experiencing a uh, a, a, a weakening trend, meaning that the offshore wind is not as strong as it is before, and therefore. The, the expansion of the uh, coastal Polynesia has been uh, has been uh, suppressed, and therefore there's less uh, open water area for sea ice to form, which cut short the uh, the supply of the highest in the shelf water, and naturally it leads to a uh, a depleted uh, a supply of the of the dense shelf water to form the bottom water that we observed in the open ocean area. So. Uh, on the left, on, on the right, I'm showing a, a very uh, similar result to what I've been talking about uh, uh, over the, uh, the the map on the left, except that uh, it is more focusing on the uh, the sea ice formation within the sea ice pack over the uh, con broader continental shelf, uh, which is highlighted highlighted by this uh, green polygon. So. 
the time series I'm showing here is in integrated over the uh, of the entire continental shelf, and the blue and red lines are are representing the thermodynamic ice growth and the uh, the dynamic dynamic sea ice flux. And the sum of these two is the uh, uh, sea ice concentration tendency, which is constantly zero of the continental shelf because the area is um, is always covered by sea ice during the winter time. So as you can see here, the this this uh, red the dynamic sea ice flux has uh, displayed a slightly increased trend over the uh, past thirty years, and in turn. Uh, to compensate that, the thermodynamic ice thermo growth has experiencing a decreasing trend over the past 30 years, meaning that there's more sea ice getting converged within this, excuse me, within this uh, continental shelf area. Therefore, it left less space for new ice to grow within the sea ice pack. And the reason for the dynamic sea ice flux uh, uh, evolve in the in in the in the convergent way is more or less associated with the surface wind forcing so the the grain time series is the uh, wind divergence that we calculated and in integrate over this uh, green polygon and we found that they have uh, exhibited a very um, high correlation to the uh, dynamic sea ice flux change so putting these two um, sort of results together Thing what we're looking at is a, a changing in the surface wind field that is that is uh, altering the, the the movement of the sea ice, and these uh, movement of sea ice is uh, leading to the uh, less uh, sea ice formation over the uh, over the past thirty years. So uh, the next question that we are trying to answer is that what is causing this wind trend? But before we doing that, we uh, we did some uh, back of the envelope calculation to to confirm our theory is plausible by uh, adopting the observed sea ice change uh, over these um, um, budget analyses of the bottom order, and so this is a very rough calculation, and I won't bore you with the details of the assumption, uh, but. The comparison of the uh, estimation of the bottom order reduction based on the sea ice change and the observed uh, reduction of the uh, bottom order, we found that these two, the estimation and the observation are roughly in line with, that, with each other in terms of their magnitude. So uh, I believe these uh, assumptions, uh, uh, the, the theory of these uh, sea ice change is uh, explaining the observed whether the bottom order reduction is, is is valid. But there are some um, um, issue with the uh, with the bottom order uh, estimation and uh, and that's that's mostly associated with that the, the the number that we use to estimate the bottom order volume uh, for each of these terms are actually uh, coming from a inverse model method which is not very well constrained, uh, so we uh, end up with a very, very big uh, uncertainties here. So, so we come back to the the last question that we're trying to answer. So, what is causing the, uh, the the change in the surface wind that is leading to the the the, the change of the behavior of the sea ice motion, which eventually leads to the uh, less high in the shelf water formation and reduction of bottom water uh, volume. So we uh, take a look at, at uh, the, uh, the the reanalysis uh, atmospheric atmosphere 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 field. So the the arrow that I'm showing here is again the same uh, wind uh, trend vector that's being derived of the winter time from 1992 to 2020. And this offshore wind is pretty strong over the southern continental shelf again. And if we look at the linear trend of the sea level pressure, we found that the offshore, uh, the, the initial trend of the of the surface wind is actually uh, a result of a 
a very strong deepening signal of the Amson C area and sandwiched by the uh, the fielding signal to the east of the of the Weddell Sea. So if if we are uh, if we are familiar with the uh, with the uh, the the Amazon Sea low change and uh, we would found that these uh, this this pattern of this sea level pressure is very uh, similar to those uh, caused by the uh, the the IPO related uh, sea level pressure pattern, and and that is exactly the case when we look at the uh, the intertidal Pacific Oscillation Index over the past thirty years. So the intertidal Pacific Oscillation or the IPO is a sort of a, a metric that's measuring the uh, the the sea surface temperature variability of the uh, central Pacific. It's a bit of like the uh, uh, the El Nino index, but it is more focusing on the uh, multi-decade timescales. And, uh, and we can see over the past 30 years, since uh, 1992, the IPO index has experienced a, a distinct um, negative polarity. And if we do a regression, of the surface wind vector and mean sea level pressure over this negative trend of IPO, we can more or less capture uh, or reproduce the observed uh, trend in the sea level pressure and the surface wind. And these results are suggesting that the observed of the observed initial wind over this non continental shelf in the Weddell Sea is very likely caused by the uh, the negative polarity of the intertidal. Uh, uh, oscillation, and so, well, the mechanism by which the uh, the IPO is affecting the uh, the the sea level pressure uh, around the uh, peninsula area is ha is actually being um, you know, being being broadly studied before. It is mainly through this perturbation uh, of the sea surface temperature variability over the sea level pressure field. And these no, these uh, uh, perturbed, uh, these uh, excited variability got uh, propagated uh, downward to the uh, uh, Amazon Sea low area through this uh, Rossby wave train. Um, that's how the this teleconnection uh, works. So, uh, with this being said, being said, uh, we we're probably uh, Looking at a sort of a sort of new um, plan near planetary scale teleconnection uh, between the tropical seas of temperature variability over the Pacific and the bottom water uh, the bottom water volume in the uh, Weddell Sea, and uh, and this is a, uh, a teleconnection that's working on the multi scale multi time scales, and more to that, we should know that these. Um, um, negative polarity of the intertidal Pacific Oscillation is part of the natural climate signal, uh, which is uh, suggesting that the, the, the natural variability uh, in the climate mode can actually swing the, the observed, um, what is it, bot uh, observed bottom order volume trend uh, on the multi-decadal time scales. And this is actually this opened up a um, inter interesting discussion. Uh, if if any of you are will be uh, will be stick around for the next climate coffee session. If you are uh, Kathy, Kathy will be talking about uh, a similar observing trend uh, in the Antarctica in the Australia Antarctic basin, but they are has they has attributed the reduction of the bottom water and. Uh, the weakening of the overturning, obvious overturning the circulation to the increased freshwater input from the uh, the uh, ice shelf melting. So that is uh, more associated with these uh, the warming climate that has more uh, human effects in it. So I think um, putting these two results together, it, it highlights the complexity of how the systems work uh, in the Antarctica and. And I think it calls for uh, needs to uh, properly represent uh, the uh, the effect of this natural variability uh, 
over these tiny area in the continental shelf um, and how that uh, signal being propagated uh, into the uh, deep ocean uh, in our climate model in order to uh, level up our confidence of looking at some of the uh, projection of our climate systems. And these processes are currently not properly represented in the um, typical coupled climate model that's being used to produce reports like IPCC uh, reports. Um, so yeah, there's more to be done in the future. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it.